why am I the person that feels that I'm not being productive or I just feel like I am, uh, I'm not myself. And it's been like that for, you know, for a week. And then last week I had to kick myself in the butt and say, listen, get back up. So almost every single day this week, I've been active and I have been working out. So even this morning, I woke up at six. I set my alarm because, you know, in the last couple of weeks, I haven't set alarm. I've been waking up around six, uh, 630, maybe, and maybe even seven pushing it. Right. And, you know, in the past, I would wake up at 415 every single morning and go hit the gym. And now the gyms are closed. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and start uh, setting my alarm and waking up because if you don't, guess what? You get into that rut. You get into where you uh, where you don't want to go. And so, yeah, I've been starting to set my alarm, waking up and running. And this morning, I think I ran like 3.25, three, three, three miles and a quarter, three and a, half, uh, quarter, three and a quarter mile. Um, and I feel great, right? I have a lot of energy and I wouldn't have done that. I would have felt bad about myself. And you've probably noticed that in the last couple of weeks, like, oh, this guy doesn't look the same and he doesn't have the energy, right? And and so I had to get back on. So uh, guys, get out there, get a little bit of exercise, Make get out of that depression mode that you might get yourself into because it's valuable. And music uh, keeps me going. And I posted about this this week, you know, all my life, I've had music to lean on when things have been tough for me, when things have been rough for me, when I've been going through something, uh, relationships in the past, um, just anything that's happening in your life, usually usually music gets me through it. And I'm not sure if music gets you through it. I would like to hear in the comments if music gets you through a lot of things. You remember when you were a kid or maybe you're a teenager or you're in high school or in college, you fell in love with that one person over a summer or you had that relationship over a summer and that one song that you still remember to this day uh, because of, you know, because of music, right? So those music brings a lot of great things to to your life. And right now we lean on it, right? It's great memory. So if you could pick a song or a few songs, it's amazing to kind of have that as uh something that keeps you going because it keeps me going. So every single day um, I listen to music. I listen, even before the show, I had my, one of my favorite uh, podcasts, music podcasts on that I listen to weekly. And I've been doing that for a long time. Right. Uh, even right. Look next to me. Look at, look, I have my old DJ stuff that I still mess around with once in a while. Right. And I still have the, I have the new stuff too. Right. Uh, I love music. I play drums. Even now, my I got my son into playing drums, and it's just amazing that you can keep yourself going with this other thing, right? And so everyone should have uh, a hobby, right? Everyone should have something that they can lean on. And music for me, it, it's music. And guys, I'm seeing a bunch of people saying it gets you out of depression. Uh, absolutely, music gets you going. And that's one thing I did not cancel or pause at my hotel. And guess what it was? It was the music subscription that we uh, that we pay for monthly, right? In our hotel lobby, I was like, you know what? No, I don't care. I'll, I'll cancel everything else and I'll pause everything else. But I am not pausing music, and because guess what? When people walk into a hotel and there's music instead of just quiet, you feel good, right? You feel like ah, oh, there, there's life still happening in this hotel, and I love that idea that uh, music can keep us going. So, guys, thank you so much. Uh, for that. And thanks so much for posting on your favorite show. So go back to a past few comments. If you just go to rupesh.co, that goes directly to my LinkedIn profile. And you'll see that I uh, I posted like, hey, what's your favorite song? And it was just great to see all these people like, hey, you know what? Music also has helped me. And so guys, thank you so much for that. And guys, thank you so much for just supporting me here on LinkedIn and, and the show because it's been valuable. It's been really valuable that you are uh, keeping me inspired because not only when you like and comment, you keep me going because there's days I'm like, nobody cares about this stuff. Nobody cares about what I'm sharing. And it's that imposter syndrome that gets you once in a while. It gets you off it, right? Even when times were good, you were always like, why am I the GM of this property? Or why am I this one person? And Guys, I appreciate it. So thanks so much for hitting the like button and supporting me here on this because it's valuable when you have a um, a community around you. And, and I think it's valuable. All right. So this past week or last Friday, I actually posted 51 things you can do right now as a hotel manager. And did anybody get that checklist? And if you did, hit the comments and let me know what you thought about that checklist and what's one thing that you're going to start on that checklist, right? Because there's 51 things. And guess what? Though A lot of these things you can do right now. 
And uh, a lot of these things that you could do when you're open, uh, but it's valuable when you get started. So if you need that checklist from me about the 51 things, send me a direct message after the show and I will directly send you the link to that PDF that you can download and print. And I was trying to print it out this morning and my printer messed up and I couldn't print it. So I was going to show it to you, but hey, we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, all right. Uh, um, oh, another thing I wanted to hit. I wrote down, here's my list of notes that I just started or the, uh, that I made the last day or so. And, and I really worked on it this morning. Um, I am coming out with mini courses, mini courses on marketing uh, for your hotel and yourself as personal branding, uh, hotel marketing, a lot of things. Leadership is a big thing. And I am also having, or I'm going to be teaching a mini course on service excellence, right? So let me know if you're interested in this. It's going to be simple, mini, mini courses that are going to keep you going. And uh, this is all a part of, of the coming soon of my new, brand new website that's going to have hopefully launch here in the next couple of weeks, but I'm super excited about that. So guys, thank you so much to all. And there's a bunch of people that said I reviewed the checklist. Yes, I got it. Uh, over 500 people have uh, have downloaded it or not downloaded, but sent me a direct message in the last week saying, thank you so much. I need that checklist. Send it to me. So guys, I will send it to you if you just send me a direct message after the show. All right. Now, I am super excited about this and I've been following this guy for quite some time. And, you know, three years ago or maybe two years ago, he sent me a message. Hey, I want to, I want to connect with you on LinkedIn and I love what you're doing here on LinkedIn. And I was like, yeah, you know, let's connect. And so I've been following him and we just been connecting and I've seen that he's done a lot of things and his, and his book came out and I was like, oh, wow, this is awesome. And I, I wanted to bring him on. So I sent a message to him and guess what? He's a part of other things too, that we'll talk about. Uh, all right. So our featured guest, and I don't want to mess this up, our featured guest for today, uh, and the topic is welcome back, how to reopen your hotel, right? I'm excited about that. We're all ready to reopen our hotels. We're all ready to get back to work. Our featured guest today is Ryan or Charles Ryan Minton. He is a best-selling author and hotel general manager. So he's a hotel general manager right now for the Fort Lauderdale Marriott North. I'm going to welcome him right now to the show. Hey, Charles. Hey, welcome. thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you so Here. much for joining us. And um, hey, there's a lot of people online and they... Uh, thank you because they're excited about this. They're excited to open their hotel back up. And guess what? If their hotel is already open, which a lot of people, in most cases, their hotel is open, they're ready to get take some of these steps into bringing their team back. They're, bring, they're bringing their guests back. And so we're going to talk about all these things today. And, and we also want to know, what did you do that when you went to, a, when you started at a hotel, when it was at the bottom 25th of the percentile in the overall uh, rankings of the of a Marriott of, of a Marriott group and you brought it to the top three percent. We're gonna talk more about that. Charles, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Rupesh. Appreciate it. Hey, tell us about yourself and tell us kind of how you got started in hotels. Well I started at the front desk. I was very fortunate I was hired as a front desk manager with no experience in the hotel business. Uh had an awesome mentor, Brian Perkins, and uh hired me, was very big into hiring or talent, not necessarily experience, which I definitely embrace. And so I started the front desk and just worked my way up through the industry. And um, I've worked in several departments at this point, most of all of them, and even took a break from hotels for a couple of years. I worked in private aviation and uh, now back in the hotel industry and loving, loving every minute of it. That's awesome. Now, tell us about your hotel, the, the current situation of your hotel right now. So I'm at the Fort Lauderdale Marriott North, and uh, we made a business decision about a month ago to close the doors, which was obviously very difficult. We were fortunate to be able to furlough our employees. Not a great situation, but at least we were able to offer them that opportunity to continue to collect their benefits. And um, that way, when we're ready to open back up, we can bring them right back in. So we've been closed for about a month now, very limited staff. It's myself, uh, my director of sales, uh, who's watching Juan, and uh, my chief engineer, Oscar, and my controller, Robin. Those are the four of us that are here uh, in this big empty building right now. So what have you been doing? Because I know we talked about this yesterday. You guys have just been taking shifts and you guys, have, you're closed. So there's nothing to do. 
But there is a ton of things to do, yeah. right? And we kind of yeah. went over some of those things yesterday. Um, please share what you're doing for your closed hotel right now. How are you staying busy? How are you staying active? You know, it sounds funny, but I'm probably busier than I ever have been. There's just a lot that still has to happen in the building and to be ready for when we reopen, which we're all very hopeful will be soon. And, um, you know, obviously the sales process is still happening into the future. So Juan is taking the lead on that and we're still getting leads, which is great for third, fourth quarter into next year. Um, you think about just that effort alone is typically five, six people. And right now it's one. So um, he's probably more busy than ever. Um, the building itself has to be maintained still. It has to be operated. So uh, between the four of us, we're, one of us is always here from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. seven days a week. Uh, we obviously have security as well. But one of the things that I think is most interesting that most people probably wouldn't think about until you actually have to do it, but you have to keep the water running. And you have to keep it flowing through the building. And so we have a schedule where we have to flush all 316 toilets on a regular <laughs> basis. So um, why? I, why why is that? Why do you, you know, it's, water, it's important um, just for the health yeah. of the water, obviously, to be continually flowing so that it's not sitting. So you don't have bacteria and things like that. Bro, mm -hmm. um, you need to exercise. the equipment. <clears throat> it has to keep going so that you don't have maintenance issues when you do reopen because if you think about it, you don't use any of this stuff for a month or weeks and then all of a sudden you have an influx of people that just start using the equipment and the plumbing and the water and all the different things that are in the hotel that it, it can yeah. immediate strain so um we all take turns in that um the four of us we we all pull a, a weekend shift where we're here and we, uh, we walk the floors and we flush the toilets and we run the showers and we run the sinks we go in the kitchen turn all the equipment on just to keep things going. You have to check the, the boilers every day, check the chillers, just a whole checklist of things to make sure that the, the buildings operate. Because think about it, typically have at this hotel a staff of 130 people. And that's 130 sets of eyes throughout the building that are seeing and maintaining things and can report safety issues, maintenance issues, Mm -hmm. The guys are gone. So we have to be intentional about walking every space of the building or else it could go unnoticed. Right. And, and then yesterday we talked about you have 17 floors. Is that correct? Right. 17 floors. And have you shut down any floors or, or is it just still open and kind of lights are turned like everything's turned off in the room? Everything's unplugged or what's going on? Right. So um, we we went through, we set all the temperatures the same throughout the hotel. What was the temperature? What's the temperature you said? So we're at 73. We're in South Florida. So we have to be careful with yeah. obviously moisture and things like that. Uh, we pull all the drapes on all. I think you're frozen. I honestly, I think you're frozen. Uh oh, I think you're frozen. Hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I want to make sure that um, we get him back. Guys, stand by. Hang on a second. I think he got frozen. Um, his line might be, um, hang on a second. Hey, Charles, 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 Charles. Charles, call back if you can hear us. Call back. Oh, there you go. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I promise we play the, paid the internet bill. At least. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I have I have a tip um, the, for the Internet, for Spectrum uh, Business. Uh, they actually called and said, hey, we're going to give you and, and this is what they told us for our hotels here in Central Florida. They said we're going to give you 50 percent off of three months. So for us, we have um, Internet, cable and phone with Spectrum Internet. And I want to thank them because they didn't have to do that. They gave us 50 percent off or if your hotel is closed. They were going to pause your entire bill, which is awesome. That's thousands of dollars. So, guys, shout out to the Spectrum. They're not a sponsor or anything, but I just wanted to thank them because, listen, we're all struggling through this. And Ryan uh, or Charles, uh, you you allowed me to call you Ryan because a lot of people call you Ryan and you go I by Ryan. Ryan. So, Ryan. I might go back and forth between Ryan That's and Charles. Fine. I answer to both. 
<laughs> all right, Charles. All right, so sorry for the for the uh, for the delay, but all right. So continue with we, with uh, what we were talking about. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things we obviously did to prepare the building for for the closure, um, including what I mentioned on the floors. I don't know how much came through, but we you know we have all the drapes closed in the hotel or in the rooms. We have the lights turned out, the doors are open so that we can pop in and out and see things quickly. Mm. Turn the water on, turn it off, flush the toilets. Um, obviously all the fitness center equipment is turned off. Um, the pool equipment is turned off all the, there's a whole host of things that we did to try to be more efficient, obviously why we're, why we're closed. Right. And so do you have a list of everything you've shut down? So that way, when you go back to, uh, the group, we can get the gray light or we can uh, go back through that checklist. So we're like, not on opening day. We're like, Oh, we forgot to turn the pool heater up or we forgot to do this. Yeah, we we have recorded everything. We have some great checklists that we follow and um, we know exactly what we're going to need to do and how quickly we need to do it to to get everything back up and running. And I think that's important. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so it's kind of, isn't it scary to kind of walk the halls by yourself? And, you know, do you, are the lights off right now or are you just kind of using a flashlight? Yeah, the lights are on in the hallways. Uh, there's obviously lights out in certain parts of the hotel, um, the restaurant, the lobby. Uh, areas, some of the lobby areas, but, uh, yeah, you know, I've had some, some people joke with me. Is it anything like the shining? Everyone has seen that. <laughs> it it's, it's odd. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's definitely, there are moments when you're walking around and you hear something creak or crack and it gets your attention. If you're <laughs> expecting it. <laughs> would, guys, would you guys freak out if you're the only person in the hotel and you're walking like 300 rooms or a couple hundred rooms and you're like, uh, this is the middle of the night or at night at dark, in the dark and you're like, uh, freaking out. I, uh, I had a moment uh, right when we closed. I was on the floors by myself and I was coming around the corner. And we one of the things that we did was um, turn off all the ice machines on the floor. And so... Uh -huh. Obviously, they need to defrost once they're turned off. And this had just happened. And then my mindset was that they were already turned off. So I'm coming around the corner and a block of ice dropped into the tray of the ice machine. And I literally lost my mind because it scared me so bad because I didn't know what it was exactly. It scared me to death. And I just stood there frozen in the hallway for a second until it registered. OK, that was the ice machine. <laughs> did you Did you scream? <laughs> I would have screamed like my I, little kid. I, I might have yelled. I'll admit, I might have yelled a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. I mean, I've, I've been there where you're like, uh, what, you're like, is there somebody that's hiding in this room, in the, yeah. down this hallway? All right, so you leave all your doors open so it's easier to get into and you're not like walking back and forth if, you, if the key's not working or door's not working. Um, how do you keep them open? How do you keep these doors, you know, ajar? We just have them open with the deadbolt. Um, it's just oh, okay. the way to do it. And that way we're not doing any wear and tear on any furniture. You know, we didn't have to go out and purchase 316 uh, door stops. But, um, you know, we all know the guests use that anyway. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so we just have the door, the deadbolt. Popped. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, well, it's so important to do that. I, I would remind people um, because if you're not, you know, exercising the locks as often as you normally would, a battery might die. And yeah. so that's another reason why you should have your doors open because if the battery dies, it's a whole process, obviously, to get it, get the door open. Yeah. All right. So you're the general manager. You have a limited, like really skeletal staff there and you're trying to get things done. You're waiting till you get the green light to open up your doors. We're kind of almost, you're hearing some good news about maybe your state or your city might open up. And this is a time for us to plan how to open up and what to look for. And so this is a conversation that I wanted to bring you on because you have some great insight. And uh, we have a list here that we can kind of go over and, uh, and and talk about it. But, you know, you're you're a um, you're a best-selling author too. So I want to talk about that and, and what you do. But all right, so what is the first thing as we prepare to open up to do? Wow, there's, I don't know, there's a lot, there's a lot to do, but you almost really, my mindset, I'm looking at this as if we're opening a new hotel. Obviously, we've been here for many, many years, but perhaps a silver lining in some of this for those of us have closed is we do have the opportunity to reset. And so 
Um, we're going to use this as an opportunity to relaunch, to relaunch as a, as a new hotel. And what I mean by that is bringing everyone in for an orientation to talk about um, what our expectations are going to be going forward. What are the guest expectations? We all know the guest expectations are going to be even higher than they ever have been in terms of cleanliness and, and service. So, um, and, I, and I think we're, it's going to be a way more competitive environment because of that. Guests are going to look for the hotels that are providing the right, the best service and the, the, the standards that they're going to feel comfortable staying in. So we're going to have a big kickoff. We're going to have a rally. We're going to have a, a big, exciting um, orientation to bring everybody back when we get that green light. And look, we're, it's probably not going to happen where, where we, the faucet just turns on and all of a sudden we're at 70, 80%. It's going to be. Yeah. So um, my hope is, and a lot, there's a lot of moving parts, but my hope is to be able to bring everybody back for at least an orientation to kick things off, get people excited, and then slowly phase folks in as occupancy allows for it. Right. So you have you furloughed everybody? Or is it just, um, uh, have you laid people off in furlough or is it just furlough? It all furloughs, which I was very thankful that our, our ownership and our company allowed us to do that. Awesome. So, you know, a lot of hotels right now, a lot of ho owners and, uh, and the ownership has applied for these loans and it's taking a long time. And thank, uh, thankfully that the Congress has reestablished new more funding for the for the small business owners uh, which myself included we're just waiting to get this ppp loan uh to get bring people back on and really maybe start on some projects and maybe do some deep cleaning and this is one of the things that you can do to use your ppp so you get that uh, taken care of and it's kind of like a forgiveness right and yeah bringing people back and i wrote down training right as like probably the one of the one of the top things when you're bringing people back kind of talk about what you're going to do when you have people in this room and, and what are you going to talk about? So maybe like, what are the top five things that you want to talk about? Well, I, I think there's got to be a human element right out of the gates, acknowledging that this is a tough time and that what we just went through with the furlough and the closure of the hotel was so difficult. I mean, for me, that's, that's obviously, and I know people that are watching that has been the hardest thing is to, this has just impacted so many lives in terms of our, yeah. our, and their families. And so um, just acknowledging that sincerely, I'm so glad that they're back will be probably the first thing that we talk about. Um, and then just moving forward, you know, what are, what are our, um, what's our plan in terms of how we're going to be the best in the market in terms of customer service, cleanliness, quality standards. Um, I want the Fort Lauderdale Marriott North to be the go-to hotel in the market for all of those things. And I want to get everybody on board for that. So we'll be talking a lot about that. And as you mentioned, there's, there's opportunity projects. I, I hope we have time with, if we have are fortunate enough to get that loan you're mentioning to get the hotel clean and ready and deep clean and um, do some of those things that sometimes just occupancy gets in the way of so that when we do start to welcome folks back, it's, clean, shiny, ready to go. Um, but you know, there's, there's, there's so many things that, um, we're going to uh, want to, uh, address in that, in that kickoff meeting, but by far the biggest thing is going to be just setting the tone and the energy and the excitement that we're, we're open and we're ready to go again. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, I think that, that bringing people together is awesome. And then I also think that we talk about what happened Maybe bring experiences like what what were you doing the last month, especially if you were closed and you weren't working? What happened to your family members? Like, was there any struggles that you went through? So you can all feel together because guess what? One person might think that they were living the lap of luxury when the other person might be thinking that, hey, they were struggling. They had to get in the, the, they had to go to the food bank to get food, right? And so if we don't share these stories of of understanding where people are coming from, then you don't understand their background. You don't understand like why they came to work this way um, as we start getting our team back together. You know, one of the things, Rupesh, I've been so touched by during this is when I do reach out to employees, one of the things you talked about earlier, what are the, some of the things, a big thing I'm doing, uh, a lot of my time is is, is HR related, pay, payroll. Obviously, we fortunately don't have our, our HR director. So I like that because it's giving me the ability to connect with our associates. And what I've been touched by is, 
them asking me how I'm doing um, yeah. is just beyond me because these folks are are out of work, have every reason to be frustrated potentially um, that that I'm not, and I just I've just been so touched by that when folks are when I talk to them and they're just asking you know how are you doing are you doing okay. Um, there's just been a real, I don't know, real human element to this. It's been so refreshing for me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, 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 everyone has this emotion that we're, you know, it's not any, no one has left mo emotion in the background, right? Mm -hmm. It's out there. Everyone feels that something's happened to them, right? Um, yeah. No matter what per what kind of person you are, you can be the a billionaire, you could be the first person. You all have these feelings. We're all in this pretty much in this together. You know, my, you might have different, you might be living in a different house. You might be living a different lifestyle or whatever, but you're all feeling emotion, right? Which I, mm -hmm. I feel like we all kind of need to talk about it. Right. And, and get it out there. And I think empathy is a huge part of it, like understanding them and then really understanding like how they're feeling, not just saying, Oh, let me, let's talk about it, but understanding how they actually feel and then understanding it. Right. Uh, not just, not just, uh, listening, but really kind of being empathetic about it. Um, all right. So I talked about what I wrote on my list was, yeah, we definitely need to bring them back and have an orientation and communicate with them, right? There's a lot of communication back and forth. So hopefully you've been texting back or sending emails out to your staff to kind of keep in touch and maybe even a call if you had to and really thanking them for sticking through this because it's tough to be at home if you've been laid off or if you're working it's tough that you can only work eight hours this week or four hours this week or you know, some of those things. So as GMs and leaders, I think it's a great opportunity for us to have that line of communication going. And then also during your training, I think there's some opportunity for cross training, which is huge, right? When you're, when you might be limited in occupancy and maybe that front desk person can work, help out in the, the F and B side or banquets or, and housekeeping, I think it's it's helpful, or even maintenance, right? There's a lot of things that you'll learn if you're the front desk agent or a an associate in different departments that you'll learn. Oh, I never, I was selling rooms all these years, and I never walked into these different room types and actually understood what they look like, or uh, or worked in housekeeping, and I didn't understand how hard it was, right? We've all been there because we've cleaned these rooms. We've been in there cleaning these rooms and we've done the laundry, but it'd be awesome for us to cross train our team, right? What, do you agree? Oh yeah. I think it's already happening. I mean, you, you read these posts and you see, actually, I just talked to a, a counterpart GM within our company at uh, our Renaissance here in Boca, South Florida. And uh, he sent me a picture. He was set up at the communal table in the lobby of the hotel. This is a full service hotel and uh, he's set up in the lobby. He says, I'm front desk today. I'm accounting. I'm answering the phone. So he, he's, he's doing it all. So um, I, for at least the you know, interim, is, that's going to be the, the new normal. I think there's probably every hotel right now, you walk in, the front desk agent is probably responsible for checking on the public restrooms. And uh, you know, they're probably ringing up to go orders. I mean, we're we're all doing things that we typically wouldn't do just to keep keep the service there and to keep things going. So yeah, cross training is I think gonna be sure. Yeah. And then you know the, the the other thing I could think think about is service excellence training. Like how do you how do you kind of refresh everybody on here are the things to engage guests when they come in? Here's how to do it, right? Keeping our distance and here are the new norms that we're gonna be going through while we go through this, right? Um I think that that service training is huge because we didn't have time for it in the past. Many hotels didn't have time for service training and they kind of just left on the back burner. Yeah, I'll do it. And then they put it to next month. I'll do it later and we'll get people together. This is a great time. If you can bring people back, and you have that loan that's going to help you afford to bring people back and train them. Service training is huge. Like get them on board, get them to get them to understand like the five people that are checking in or the 30 people that are checking in today. How do you make them feel really good that they picked your hotel? And that's all through training. That's all through engagement. That's all through like human connection, like we talked about. Yeah, you know, and I think what's um, what I'm feeling is that from some of my employees is that one of the biggest things they're missing right now is that guest interaction. And I think when we do reopen or when we start to get back to normal levels, um, this pause has really. <laughs> 
people to um, have an opportunity to think about what they really loved about working in hospitality. And yeah. so I think that is going to be really cool as we welcome folks back that our team is going to um, be able to genuinely communicate that, um, that appreciation for the guests. But something you said as well in terms of service training is it's, it's huge to have that out of the gates. It's one of the things I talk about all the time when I speak and in the book is it's so important to communicate what your service basics are. What are your basic expectations of service? And mm -hmm. one of the things that I have in our hotel that uh, I've brought with me everywhere, and I know a lot of hotels do this, but if you haven't, and this is a great time to do it because there's, like you said, there's time, right? There's time to do things maybe. Yeah. Um, and this service basics card, literally they carry around their uh, wallet. I think I have one here nearby um, is, really like a service pledge. And, and this is something we just recently did when I've only been at this hotel for two months. Um, we're going to do it again. There's a huge poster in the back hall with this blown yeah. up. Everybody signs it. Um, but whenever I talk to um, different service, um, when I talk to different companies that are looking to elevate their service, one of the first questions I ask is, uh, what are your service basics? And if they can't answer that, that's the starting point. Um, do do your employees know that it's an expectation that within 20 feet they're making some type of eye contact within 10 feet they're having some type of exchange verbally with the guest you have to have those baseline expectations so this this is an awesome opportunity to roll those out as folks start to come back online and hand it to them and sit down with them and go through it line by line and say hey look these these are the expectations that we have in terms of service going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And, and guys, welcome to everybody that's on the show. Um, I appreciate you guys joining us from all over the world, which I love. Um, Charles, they're here to see you and here to listen to all these great tips because I think... I don't know. I think for, they're here to see you, buddy. Huh? <laughs> they're here to see you. We, we're doing it together. It's a, it's a team <laughs> effort. Listen, um, I think they're... I mean, they're all right, so listen, we're giving away... Char Charles, will you sign a few books Absolutely. Away. Yeah, I'd love to. I've got some copies here. Uh, I'll send hardbacks because I've got hardback and paperback and I'm a big fan of the hardback. So we'll do a couple of those. Awesome. So guys, before the end of the show, we're going to announce. So the most engaging person. So comment where you're listening from, comment uh, where you're watching from, and also comment what you're going to, what's one thing that you're going to do to reopen your hotel? It doesn't have to be everything. What's one thing that you're going to focus on right now to reopen your hotel, re-engage your hotel, and to welcome your associates back first and your guests uh, right after that. Um, comment so you can be one of the uh, one of the winners. I'm gonna pick. We're gonna pick two. Is that okay? Two, three. Yeah, three. Wow. All right. Three. We're gonna <laughs> give away three signed books of uh, Charles's uh, book. All right. Let's continue the conversation. Um, people are saying free book. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, Lord is saying, hey, great. Um, Great uh, information. People are loving this. So, all right, let's continue the conversation. All right, so we've we've brought them in. We've trained them. We have. Uh, let me see. We are. Uh, we're going to talk about some other things. We're going to talk about. All right. So, first one is the impression, right? The first thing that you want to do is make a great impression. So, your first impression matters to associates, right? And that's mm -hmm. doing the training. What else? Yeah, you know, if I always say you got to get the first day right, and a lot of us are going to have. Uh, first days all over again, bring these folks back. And so don't drop, don't drop the ball on that. Uh, you know, I read a stat recently. Um, I forget where I saw it, but roughly half the people that left their job last year did it in the first 90 days. And my take on that is they, you, you know, you're so excited to come to work, you got a job, you get there and then you realize like, this sucks <laughs> and you leave. So, um, I, I think it's so important to have that first day be such a great first impression of what you're about, what your hotel's about, what you're, you're about, um, and set that standard. So that's that's what I think is critical is you get that first day right and you get the first 90 days right. And with this whole situation that we're in now, everybody's going to have a first day again. And so um, let's let's do that right. Let's have fun with it. Let's set the expectations. And... Um, Let's 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 get it right out of the gates. 
right? Number two is don't be a jackass. <laughs> and yeah. I really appreciate this comment. I really, really, really. Uh, what do we mean? What do we mean by don't be a jackass? Don't be a jackass. Uh, gosh, I think it's the most important point. Um, and, and, and by the way, does everyone agree that, with this, right? <laughs> so let me ask you this question. Do you remember your first boss? What was, what was your first job? All right. So my first, one of my first few jobs was, um, in my background is design marketing. Uh, I did e-commerce stuff. I did production and all these, all these things. My first job, one of my first jobs was at General Electric Power System back in the day where I got laid off, right? And I went through the whole process of unemployment. But prior, when I first started, there was a guy there, I'm not going to say his name. I, I actually don't even remember his name, but he was a jerk. Like he yelled at people. He berated people. He thought he was the only person that could get stuff done. And he would force you to do things like right away. Like, where's my stuff? Where's this? What? Why are you? And he was yelling at all of us instead of like, understanding how we are how we're feeling and i'm young i was like in my tw early 20s right and i was like oh my god this guy's a jerk and, mm -hmm. and and i still remember this guy and i never wanted to be that i was like when if i'm ever the leader at a, in a business i'm never going to be that way because i felt like i wanted to quit every single day and guys have you been there before have you ever felt that way or you're feeling it right now and you don't you don't want to work for somebody and you don't want to be that person either let me know if you um in the comments, if you ever felt that way, have you? So, and I asked that question because I think we all remember our first. And uh, a lot of us have good stories. A lot of us have similar stories to yours. Not great. And I asked the question because I think it's a good reminder that um, we need to remind ourselves as leaders that we are impacting people and their day. And so you may not be someone's first boss, but you do have the opportunity to be the example of a great leader, potentially for the first time for folks. You know, in this industry, we have a lot of folks that are in school or out of college or new, new, new into the workforce. And you may be their first boss, but you definitely may be um, the first opportunity they have to see what a great leader looks like. And in my book, one of the things that I include is um, my list of leadership expectations that I share with my entire leadership team. Every time uh, I take on a new hotel or I get a new leader and we walk through these expectations. And one of them is um, I really believe that when you become a leader, whether it's a department supervisor or a lead all the way up to the GM, the regional, all the way up. Um, if you've got some level of leadership in your title, I believe you, you lose some basic rights and Probably the biggest right that you lose, in my opinion, is you no longer get to have a bad day. You don't. And so I, I tell my team that. And what I mean by that is um, we all know we are going to have bad days. Uh, we're going to leave the house frustrated because someone let the dog out and they got away or, you know, something crazy happened on the way to work that was frustrating. But the minute you walk in that hotel, um, you're on. And We've all worked for that guy or gal who wears their emotions on their sleeves and everybody's walking on eggshells around them that day because they're in a bad mood. And, and that, that's not fair. That's not fair to our team members. And so um, I always say to our leadership team, hey, if you're having a bad day. Come in here. We'll shut the door. We'll hash it out. But man, the minute we go back out in that building, we're on, we're smiling, we're energetic because your team is going to feed off of that regardless whether you like it or not. And it's all going to translate into the experience of the guest. And so right. um, today's environment, especially, I, I just don't think you can afford to be a jerk. <laughs> and so um, don't be one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, you know, um, they always say leaders, leaders show and uh, bosses tell, right? Um, and there's a big difference there. And if you, if you haven't understood that, kind of think about it because it's big when you can show people, like instead of just saying, go clean that, let me show you exactly what you to do because then there's expectations behind it. There's uh, ways of teaching that, hey, if I'm going to get down on my knees and if I'm going to get down on the floor behind the toilet and show you that this, you know, this is how to clean, guess what? They appreciate you more than just say, go clean that toilet because you didn't do it, right? Right. right. Um, and that goes down to every single person at your hotel. And I believe that. So don't be that. What? 
Jack Don't be a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I love that. Uh, guys, comment if you agree. And all right, so the next one is, and let me just go back. I have tons of notes on this. All right. Um, don't be that jackass. All right. So there's also <clears throat> treat your treat, employees like customers. Treat, treat your employees like customers. What does that mean? So one of the main things I mean by that, I, mean, I think I think it's obvious on surface what it means, but one of the things I like to focus on on this is we all are in the business of meeting the needs of our customers, meeting the needs of our guests. And we will go to great lengths to do whatever we need to do. So I think you have to take that same mentality, apply it to employee and to the employee experience. Specifically, I, th- I know you know this. Uh, one of the biggest things that causes a lack of job. And so one of my favorite stories, and some people might have but a watch, is uh, about the mop, mop list. So there's this story that, the hotel that the employees had grown so disengaged that they were uh, looking to you. So they brought in obviously third party to try what what's on here? Why fix this? And as they started to peel back the layers, they found out that it literally went all the way back to long term long term house public space attendant who um, had requested from the housekeeper mom. Ah, and this particular month, the GM had kept cutting back expenses, not spending any money. So as that filtered down through the apartments, the housekeeping manager said, sorry, we can't do a mop this month. And uh, we all know how much a mop costs. A few bucks, right? Um, so that the very cool that that person needs to do their job. And uh, I, I really believe that when right people spend a whole show on it. Yeah. But if you hire the right person, whether we like it or not, we have to admit to ourselves, they're not coming in to make you, not coming in to work because they're so excited. To coming in because they are service minded. They have a heart for hospitality. Like the way it makes them feel. It's their reputation. So you're not providing them with tools that they need. That's impacting their reputation. You're putting them in a moment where they are having service failure. That reflects on them personally. Don't like that. Mm-hmm. So they're going to go down the road. And in our environment, even before this happened, people will go to another job down the road for a quarter and a half. So, or less, or less or sometimes. Less, exactly. And so it's so crucial that you provide the tools that folks need to be. I ask my leadership team as soon as I start a new hotel, put together your mop. What's on your mop list? What are your employees asking? And then we pull that out every month. Yeah. Say, hey, what's on your department mop? And I will say, I will always say this because whenever I share this story with speak or Salt. Someone will say, "Oh, I don't want to open up that can of worms. It's dollars, and it's not. It's always you're. I'm always surprised when people tell me what's. It's things like I'd like to have an extra uniform to do laundry, or hey, we really need extra napkins. Care for the day a little bit. Trauma. Also, vacuum cleaner always on. My goodness, why do we not give house?" <laughs> Good vacuum. These are not things that add up to thousands and thousands of dollars. And they're always things that employees genuinely need just to do a good job. So, which ultimately is for is helping them provide good service, which at the end of the day is what we do. So exactly. I, I always uh, I always talk about start to or this month and start to try to chip away at that. Yeah, I mean I, I love that because a lot of things that here that we need to do, and and I love that you're saying a huge like ever since hotels have been open, they need vacuums. Or, yeah. You know, I've had creative house where 
name on it. I'm going to put a shirt. I'm going to write in a Sharpie. This is mine. The, you know, whatever. And they really take up by their vacuum. They care about it. But when it breaks and we they bring it to the to us as ownership or GMs, like, oh, we'll get it next. We'll get, yeah. it, uh, we'll get it in six months. Budget. Right? So on yeah. my, one of my 51 things to do right now is actually one of those things is the optimize your vacuums, clean them, get them ready to be yeah. used. Right, P PM those uh, those vacuum cleaners. That's a huge. That cuts such a simple thing that gets the department frustrated. Like when you don't, when you have to actually vacuum, and then guess what? Then you have to go and use your room to go and pick up that stuff. It is annoying. I've, I've, job so I've hard. seen housekeepers literally in tears when you hand them a new vacuum cleaner, and that's 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 crazy. I mean, it should not be at that point where they are so excited to get a, a new vacuum cleaner that they're moved to tears. I mean, at that point, we're not doing our jobs as, as uh, operators. Yeah. And it's, you're suffering on your service scores. You're suffering on guest uh, experience. There's a lot of things that are happening behind it. You're suffering on labor. Mm -hmm. if there was, if there's, yeah, if they're really. brooming now after they vacuum, they're brooming, it's taking them more time to clean that room. And then you wonder why at the end of the end of the week, um, why it's like 35 40 minutes for the for the room exactly. guess yeah. what they had to go run next door to go buy go borrow a vacuum or the floor down or up and go borrow a vacuum while uh, you know while they didn't have what why they couldn't vacuum the rooms right so right. huge opportunity there as far as what to do and keeping your uh keeping your team and and, and, and treating them like customers i love that uh, all right, so we have a bunch of other things. Guys, if you love this conversation so far, and Charles has been amazing at this, and I, and I can't wait to read your book, Charles. Um, there's also some other things that we could talk about right now. So forecasting is huge. Like, right now, hope you, if you're open, hope you're still forecasting what's going on, right? Um, because it's not, forecast is going to help you in your supplies that you're ordering. Forecast is still going to be helping you in what's happening in the market if they announce something in fourth quarter or next year. You know, you need to be ready, and, and revenue management is a huge part of that. So hopefully you're not just setting and forgetting, but uh, you're still looking out for those things that, that, are, that are potentially coming your way or your city. Uh, what else are you guys doing as far as forecasting? So, you know, one of the things that's just, and I think everyone can relate to this, is difficult is um, this has never happened before. So, man, how do you, how do, how do you forecast, uh, especially the immediate Future, it's tough. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're looking at everything. Um, obviously, we've got a great revenue management team on our side, and our director of sales is fantastic. Um, you know, using a five year trend, I think, is huge as an initial guide just to kind of see, you know, where things are. But um, I think we can all be honest and just admit that right now, this is this is a tough, tough situation to forecast for right now. I don't yeah. think we really yeah. know where this is going to be at least at least through the end of the year i think yeah have you pretty much just dropped your rates or are you looking at it weekly because i think that if well you're closed right now but for a lot of hotels that are open i think their booking periods like the window is like one day or 24 hours or three days right most um you know or we'll comment what you guys are doing in the, in the comments let us know how you're forecasting and what you're looking at or have you just set your rates at one rate um, or, uh, you know, based on your room types, of course, but have you just set it and kind of forget it for the next, the entire rest of the year? Or are you saying, Hey, I'm going to keep my rates high for a month out, but really manage them right now and look at my comp set and kind of look at where my market is and fluctuate based on that. And then, um, let us know what you're doing. Cause I, I think that's valuable. And then also one thing with your Charles, if you're open, you know, for a lot of these hotels, where is their business coming from right now? So for our properties, you know, we have a lot of construction workers. Construction still going on. There's a lot of people that are still out in the workforce traveling from door to door, uh, doing these things that are kind of still in the sales, par uh, you know, part of, the, of, the, of their business. And they still need to travel. They still need to move from here to there. So, you know, we still have some of those people coming in. Charles, what are you hearing as far as what, that are calls that are coming in for the future? Um, right now, you know, obviously healthcare is, is huge. Um, our counterparts across the street are seeing some of that, um, going forward, you know, we're still getting some initial calls about weddings and things like that. But even, even some of that is up in the air in terms of sales and catering on those efforts. Um, some association business, I think down the road is starting to consider, 
um, coming back. And then hopefully, you know, our bread and butter B and T or BT is going to start um, getting back in. You know, we're looking at um, and watching closely what some of these major corporations are mandating in terms of travel and what they're allowing for. Um, so we can be ahead of it. So, you know, making sure that we have everything in place to make them feel comfortable when they do come here. Uh, we've had some initial requests already about, hey, what what are you guys doing um, to ensure that the rooms will be clean and that the hotel is practicing social distancing? So I think those are going to be some new norms in the sales process that we have to be armed with. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe some nice collateral that's going to show and we'll be able to provide. Like these are these are our new standards. These are our standards that we're following um, because people are people are going to be asking for that. Yeah, and I, and I wrote down two things that are going to be huge. So two things that are going to be super valuable for guests that are coming in now is going to be technology driven and it's going to be your uh, your cleaning protocols protocols. I think it's going to be huge. Two things. Technology and cleaning protocols are going to be huge for any hotel, no matter what size you are, no matter what the, you know what kind of business you, that, that's coming in. These thing, two things you have to kind of work on diligently, like uh, you know keyless entry to come into your rooms. It, it might be an option for you know, a lot of Marriotts and Hiltons and some of those brands. Um, and then also, what are you doing for cleaning? I've had so many people send me messages now, like, "Hey, what? Here's a new cleaning pro protocol that our that we're." selling to the industry right now as far as an option um i've seen sprays um, foggers i've seen robots coming to the room and zapping the room uh, i've mm -hmm. seen a lot of different things a lot of cool things like hey you know this makes people feel comfortable that their room has been sanitized are you guys doing any, anything like that as far as the cleanliness side well, we will be obviously we're not we're not open right yet but one of, one of the things that we keep hearing and um there's, there'll be more direction, I think, coming from the, the brand is that phrase hospital grade clean, you know, hospital level wow. clean. Um, that that is going to be the new norm is um, that. And I read an article this morning. It was on Forbes uh, where Marriott is getting ahead of some of that um, and going to be rolling out some some new standards and expectations with ensuring that the rooms are hospital clean. Um we like to think that, you know, hotel clean is really clean, but I think we all have that mm -hmm. mind that hospital clean is that next level. And so we're going to have to be at that level. And, um, you know, there's things that I, I think we're all going to start considering, um, removing high touch items from the room, potentially coffee makers. I, I don't know how that's going to go over, but I did read a, a recommendation that maybe things like coffee makers will be removed. Um, Going obviously to disposable glassware versus uh, uh, having the actual glassware in the rooms. Yeah, uh, minimizing staff interaction, uh, packaging room service so that it's just left at the door. One of the things I talked about in the article, um, and by the way, I did not. Bear, they they cited that Marriott's doing this. I haven't confirmed it myself yet, so uh, I want to say this is Marriott's new standard. But sure, I think that um, that it talked about was providing the guest with. Um, bags when they check in for their um, soiled linen and terry to bag themselves and then leave right on the inside of the door so that when housekeeping comes through, they just quickly remove the bag. They're not entering the guest room really beyond just opening the door. So uh, there's a lot of conversations that are going to be happening about what, what we need to do and how we're going to do it to ensure that we're um, making sure that the environment is safe for both the guest and our employees. Right. Now will guest will guest appreciate that? Like, hey, these guys are taking extra steps to make sure that I'm safe and then that 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 room I'm staying in is is kind of is safe too, right? To to occupy. I hope so, but I also know that just and I, I know you follow a lot of uh, different groups and I, I do as well. And I I don't have I, I don't have the luxury of being open, so I haven't experienced what some of the expectations are for guests right now, but I am reading a lot about how some of the guests that are staying still have the same expectations, if not beyond, um, that the fitness center should be open, that uh, they should be getting housekeeping service every day. And I think at this point, most brands have eliminated um, at least stay over housekeeping service. Um, yeah. Yet there's, there's guests that are still asking and, and getting quite frustrated that they're not getting it. So 
I think there's just going to be a lot of, you know, re-education and retooling of how we, how we do business. Yeah. And I think uh, the expectations or the communication at the front desk during check-in is a huge part, maybe even online before the booking process, like here is what we do to keep you safe. And I think that's part of the, um, it's actually part of the 51 things I, I, I mentioned on my checklist, like, Hey, let update your website to kind of, uh, Make sure your description's up to date of what your standards are. I think that's huge. And even your marketing, like if you put in your marketing that you're you're san- you're sanitizing, you're clean, you're you know some of these words that that make a difference. Hospital grade, I love. I wrote that down. Hospital grade cleaning, cleaning because yeah. I think it's people feel better um, that that you're doing these things and and not just saying it, but you're actually doing it. I think it's super valuable. All right, so. Um, Guys, have you guys liked this? We're approaching an hour now, and we've this, there. I've already written down a ton of uh, different things. You know, I have. So we th- we have communication, training, uh, empathy, which is uh, we talked about. Forecast, inventory is huge. Like, are, have you guys done a inventory? Like, as soon as you close, to kind of understand where where par levels are, and you know, in different departments too, like your F and B side, where what food you had to give away or throw away or whatever and um, how how is inventory working for you guys charles yeah we actually obviously we did a closing inventory of everything so we know exactly what's on hand we had a lot of perishables in the kitchen that we had to get rid of which we were able to donate to charity and employees which was nice Uh, we have a lot of stuff in the freezer that should hold for quite a while which by the way another part of that checklist every day check the freezer make sure that it's at temperature the last thing you want to do is have your freezer go down and not know it's been down for a few days because you're going to lose a lot of inventory. Um, but yeah, we have inventories of everything. Um, and, uh, you know, the good news is we're ready. Um, you know, we could open tomorrow. Honestly, I have everything yeah. I need at this point. We'd have to order some, you know, some fruits and vegetables, but in terms of, um, supplies for housekeeping and for the rooms, we're ready to go. Um, but, I am getting notices and emails from some of our vendors. Some things are harder to get, obviously. Um, the food the food provider, um, the food distributor um, has basically said we're our main focus right now is is um, retail and healthcare. Those are the big areas that they're putting their energy towards. so your your deliveries may take a little longer. We lost them. Understand. You still there? Yeah, we're still here. Sorry. <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, you're saying uh, that you're kind of going back to your your food preparer and kind of understanding what the process is and kind of understanding where they are as far as their distribution. And here's what I recommend, guys. Uh, if you know that in the next couple of weeks that you are going to try or your county or your city or the state's trying to open up again, I would definitely reach out to your uh, to your food purveyors and hang on a second. I think we're um, all right, are you are you back? Yeah, I'm, I I haven't gone anywhere. Okay, sorry, I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, hey, maybe it's my kids taking <laughs> up the bandwidth. Guys, chill out. <laughs> um, we're still online. All right, good. We we are still online. All right. So what I was saying is maybe we can contact our food purveyor, you know, Cisco, whoever it is, that we say, hey, listen, can we? What's going on right now? How is inventory for you guys? How is the availability for you guys? Because guess what? If you open up next week or in two weeks, you want to be ready with what you need. And if they're saying the restaurants can open back up and maybe there's a six foot rule or a distancing rule, at least you know that. Then you can base your inventory on that. And be ready, because guess what? Cisco, U.S. Foods, all these uh, food purveyors are going to be hit hard to restock their entire inventory as far as F&B side. Um, and you may not be able to get some of the things that you were hoping for. So this is a great time for you to reach out to them, say, understand, maybe even order a, a small amount of things just so you have it ready, um, because you know you're going to use it in the next six months, and you kind of know uh, we're not wasting money, but we're going to make sure that we have that uh, that those things that we're communicating. What else do you recommend? This probably the single best decision I had to make was uh, right when this all started happening, we, I said, order triple the amount of toilet paper. We, yeah. yeah. You know, and I I don't know how hard that's going to be getting, getting that going forward, but uh, at least we're prepared right now. (laughs) Yeah. I think a lot of hotels have done that and their suppliers have been pretty useful, especially if they've used a local one, we use a local one. And actually our local supplier 
they actually started selling to the public, which was awesome because nobody could find toilet paper like you know three four weeks ago. Um, but I think that now, now a lot of factories and suppliers have ramped up and they have plenty of supply. Um, so I think they should be pretty good on that point. Um, you know, also getting back into opening your hotel is getting your orders at least together and putting a budget together. So that way you know that you're going to be spending this much, right? Um, I, I think that's powerful on your checklist. Um, also your marketing, like what are you doing right now to, wh where are you going to focus on marketing when you open up? Because you, you're not going back to your old marketing plan that you had, right? Everything's changed as far as some of the channels that you may be working on, your uh, the yields that you might be getting from these different channels. I think is is uh, is going to be have to be re looked at. Um, are you guys considering some of those things for the future as far as marketing? Yeah, you know we rely a lot on the brand for our marketing initiatives, and uh, yeah. we follow a lot of their direction. Obviously, it's one of the great things about. Um, being a part of the largest hotel companies who get to participate in some of those things. And I know right now, currently they've kind of paused some things, um, but it, going forward, I mean, everything, everything's on the table. Everything is fair game in terms of, you know, what type of business we're going to go after. Um, and I think it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve to see what's out there and see what starts coming back. Um, my initial thought is that I think we'll start seeing some, um, some leisure. I, I know that people are itching to get to the beach here, specifically in South Florida. I am getting texts constantly. Uh, I heard the beach is open. I, you know, are you open? And um, the beach is not open here. It opened no. back to the hill, um, but it's not open here in South Florida yet. So, um, you know, obviously, uh, love them or hate them, um, third party booking channels will be. Uh, uh, Definitely something we're going to rely on, always have, but probably going to rely on some of that heavily too. And uh, it's just, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of things that we have to, to evaluate. Yeah. And I think a lot of these brands have paused a lot of their marketing. So it's going to be really local marketing that you're going to be doing and focused on, um, which kind of is disheartening because you're like, I just spent all this money, you know, yeah. with, with this whole brand and, you know, we, we rely on them to really get a lot of our business. And especially if you don't have a Marriott, maybe you have another brand that maybe isn't strong as far as their loyalty program that can just draw off of that. I think a lot of the local marketing that you're going to do on social media and um, as part of that checklist, like, hey, here's the things that you should be doing as far as local, just building your own personal brand and, um, I think Google is going to be a big part of it as far as helping you attain some of these, uh, these guests that are searching. Um, I think, I think there's a bunch of that. So uh, actually, uh, sorry, go ahead. I just say it goes back to, to what we talked a lot about today is the importance of your service because, um, you know, we all know how much people rely on, on social media reviews and, um, I think people are going to, they already are, but I think people more and more are going to really start combing, through that stuff to find exactly where they're going to spend their dollars um, to, to take that trip. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been a great conversation, Charles. All right. We're going to give away the book here shortly, right? To the person that's for the few people that have been most engaging here on, and I'm going to go back through while Charles talks about his book and how we, uh, how we came about to be an author and, and how'd you jump into that? Cause I know being an author is a, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of passion that you have to put